respected uh, principal sir, director sir, Sri Pandyan ji, Madam Mamata Garu, teaching, non-teaching staff, students. Uh, your students standing is a reminder that I should cut short my speech and finish it as early as possible if I really do not want to put you to a lot of trouble. I think the best you can do is not to sit. You can at, at least start, uh, stand in the standard pose. Vishram. Okay, Vishram is okay. Uh, may I request the teachers to be seated? <coughs> Uh, dear friends, investiture is all about leadership. It is your first step towards becoming a leader. And becoming a leader is a long process of trial and error, of learning from your seniors, emulating the best among them, and learning from the experiences of your superiors and your predecessors. So this whole ritual that you have undergone, this ritual is a reminder of your responsibilities. It is also a reminder of what lies ahead for you. So I have a, a set of five formulae for all the members of the new team and also to the other students who are going to become leaders in times to come. I have five formulae. If these five formulae are adopted, implemented, assimilated, and integrated, and internalized, you will become great leaders. So the first formula is about yourselves. The name of this formula is Ganesha formula. The first formula is Ganesha formula. Please repeat. The first formula is? Ganesha formula, okay. The first formula is for yourselves individually. The second formula is for your family, your respective families, your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers. So the second formula, the name of the second formula is Shiva family formula. What is the second formula? The first formula is Ganesha formula. The second formula is Shiva family formula. The third formula is for the organization, the school that you work, study in, the educational institution with which you are attached. This formula is known as Durga Ravana formula. Can you repeat? Durga Ravana formula. The first formula is very good. The second formula is? The third formula is? Durga Ravana formula. Durga and Ravana never met, but for the sake of the formula, I have named it as Durga Ravana formula. The fourth formula, the fourth formula is for the team, the team that you work with. It is known as Pancha Pandava formula. What is the name of the fourth formula? Pancha Pandava formula. The fifth and the last formula is for every student of this institution. And that is known as Sundara Kanda formula. Okay. Now let us repeat all the five formulae, one after one, all the five formula, one after one. The first one is? Okay. The second one is? The third one is Durga Ravana formula. The fourth one Pancha Pandava formula. And the fifth one Sundara Kanda formula. I will briefly explain what these formula are about. The first formula I said is Ganesha formula which is for individuals. It is for everyone. It is for the Sadar friends that I have here the Patil that I have there, the Meshram who has come from Bihar. For all these people, this formula is for each one of the students. The formula is called Ganesha formula and what we can learn from Ganesha. As leaders, every student leader has to possess 
few qualities that Lord Ganesha possesses. Just bring before your mind's maze the image of Lord Ganesha. How does Lord Ganesha look? He has very tiny eyes, huge ears. He has those tusks, long, two long tusks. He has a trunk, very longish trunk. Then he has a, a huge tummy and a mouth which is hidden by the trunk. It is covered by the trunk. And then in one hand, he has a modak or a laddu. On the other hand, he has a ankusham or a spear to actually punish the people. And then at the end of all, this huge, humongous, elephant-headed Lord Ganesha has a mouth as its as his vahana, as his vehicle, chariot, whatever you call it. What does it teach us? The first lesson is small eyes actually tell you to observe everything minutely. Whenever you want to observe something or focus on something, your eyes get narrow. When you are surprised, your eyes get wide. So, narrow eye is a symbol of focus and observation. So as leaders and as students, every one of must be very, you know, uh, very focused and also observe everything that is going on around us. And then you have huge ears. Huge ears are mainly meant to gather information from all sources. You gather information, you collect all information and store it here. So the huge ears are meant to gather information. So learn from all sources. Learn about the problems of the students. Learn about the issues confronting your educational institution. So to learn, to gather information, you need huge ears. You have to gather everything. Whatever is negative needs to be kept in your tummy. That is the reason why Ganesha has a huge tummy. The huge tummy is to store the negative information. The information that need not to be passed down. So, for that you have a huge tummy. And then, Ganesha also has two sets of teeth. One set of teeth is Dikhave Ke Das. The Das that you have to show it to other people. To, you know, to bring them into order. To control them. To threaten them if needed. To bring the whole thing into control. You need Dikhave Ke Das. But the real dots are inside, tucked inside, behind the, they are tucked behind your trunk. And then why is a trunk needed? Ganesha's trunk is the softest part of his body. It is also the toughest part of his body. Every leader must be soft with his friends, but need to be very tough if need be. So the trunk tells you, to have a Dikhave Ke Daat and actual Chabane Ke Daat are different, but at the same time, the real leader must be soft as well as tough. Many a times, toughness is taken as rudeness. So as leaders, you might end up being rude to someone. So remember Ganesha's trunk, and you will be soft in your approach towards your friends, your colleagues. So the trunk tells you to be tough at the same time, soft. So this is what Ganesha is. And at the end of it, Ganesha has a huge, humongous body. But his uh, vahana or his you know, uh, vehicle is a very minuscule, small-sized rat. What does this tell you? This tells you that however big you may be, however lofty your ideals may be, however great your position may be, live a life of great simplicity. For such a huge god like Ganesha, the Vahana is rat. Live within your means. Be simple, even when you are doing great work. This is what Ganesha tells you. The Ganesha formula wants you to be focused, observant, wants you to be soft as well as tough at the same time. It wants you to be tough on students and at the same time spare them of the rod. It tells you to collect all kinds of information from all possible sources, but only send out 
the good ones, the positive ones, and they keep the negativity to yourself. And it is also telling you to live a life of simplicity. This is the first formula. Anyone who follows this formula, whether a leader or an ordinary human being, he would be a successful human being. This is Ganesha formula. The second formula is Shiva family formula. As leaders, once the school is over, you go home, you interact with your, mo with your mother, father, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, other relatives, neighbors, so on and so forth. So how to live along with your neighbors? How to be a good family member? The Shiva family formula tells you how to be a good family man, good family person rather. Let me be uh, gender neutral. Look at Shiva family's formula. When you go home, look at the photograph of Shiva's formula, Shiva's family. You will find Shiva on one side, Parvati on one side, and then the two children. One is Ganesha, the other one is Kumaraswamy, Kartikeya, Skanda, whichever name you want to call. And then their respective Vahana. That is Shiva family. Shiva family teaches us something very unique. Look at Shiva. Shiva doesn't wear proper clothes. He wears the skin of an animal and covers himself. And he smears himself with vibhuti. He doesn't dress properly. And where does he live? He goes to the smashan, he goes to the burial ground or the funeral spot, and he lives there. What are all his friends? His friends are all bhutams, ganam, ganas, and all these rakshasas. They're all friends of Shiva. Parvati is the exact opposite of Shiva. Parvati is well dressed. She dresses in the best possible, you know, adornments. She has gold adornments. She has a mukutam. She has everything. She dresses very well. And she is the daughter of the Himavanta, who is the king of the Himalayas. So on one hand, you have Shiva, who smears Bhasma, taken from the shabams, or the dead bodies, the carcasses, the burnt bodies. And on the other hand, you have Parvati Devi, who's well-dressed, well-adorned, complete with all you know, embellishments, golden vajrams, mukutams, and everything. There is nothing that matches between Shiva and Parvati. Not just that. Their sons also don't match. Kumaraswami is personification of manhood. He is the leader of the Devagana. He is the leader of the army of the God. So physically fit, looks very handsome. And what about Ganesha? He has a, an elephant for head. He has a huge tummy. And the moment you look at Ganesha, you, you feel like laughing. So there is nothing that matches between Ganesha and uh, Kumaraswami. Not just the gods and their children, even their vahanas do not walk, match. There is a rat which is the vahana of Shiva. And for the snake that is circling around the neck of Lord Shiva, this rat is the aharam food. Rat, you know, snake loves to eat the rats. And the snake's biggest enemy is peacock. And peacock is the vahanam of Kumaraswam. So rat, snake, peacock, they don't get along very well. The vahana of Lord Shiva is buffalo, Nandi. The Vahana of uh, Goddess uh, Parvati is uh, Vyagra or the lion or tiger. It could be sometimes tiger, sometimes lion. Tiger and buffalo do not get along well. It's not just they, the god and the goddess who are an opposite of one another. Their family members are exact opposites of one another. Even their Vahanas are at war with each other. Yet, they forget all these differences and stay together. You would find that the rat coexists with the snake. Snake coexists with the peacock. The nandi coexists with the uh, um, lion of the Lord Parvati, Goddess Parvati. So what does this tell you? In your family, there could be a lot of differences between you and your brother, you and your sister. You may not like many qualities of your parents, 
your mother may have a lot of differences with you but you have to subsume all these differences in the ocean of love love should be the basis of togetherness so unless you have deep love in your family and the love must ooze first from yourself your family will not be a happy family so the ganesha formula tells you about your individual qualities the shiva family formula tells the student and the student leaders how to behave with your family love should be the basis of your dealings with your family members the third formula when you work in a school the third formula is can anyone tell me what is the third formula durga ravana formula just look at the image of lord goddess durga and ravana ravana has 10 hands 10 10 heads and two hands durga has one head and 10 hands this is the secret of a very good teamwork when you actually look at ravana he has 10 heads one head will say let's go to a movie the other one will say let's sleep now the other head says no 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 this is the time for reading and doing your homework the other head says let's go and watch cricket being played out in south africa so there are 10 heads giving 10 different directions and how many hands to implement only two hands whereas if you look at durga mata durga mata has just one head but 10 hands it, it could be ashtabhuja it could be dashabhuja and there is shorasha bhuja also if you go to bengal you have dashabhuja if you go to some other parts it is shorasha bhuja 16 hands what does this tell this tells you that the command of the whole team must function as a one whole the order must come from above and everyone must follow it it's not like ravana where there are 10 heads each one giving a different direction and only two hands to perform a team where there are too many leaders pulling in different directions and only too few people to follow the directions the team is doomed to fail all of you must be like one team that is durga formula so instead of being like ravana you should be like durga this is the third important formula the fourth formula is pancha pandava formula the pancha pandava formula each one had its his own ideas each one had his own capabilities arjuna was an adept archer bhima was a great you know wrestler nakula was a great cow tender cow herd sahadeva was a very great you know uh, ashwa palaka tender of the horses and dharma raja was a sage advisor each one had different capabilities they used all their abilities one is good at uh, cooking the other one is good at uh, managing the students the other one is good at other things so all of us working towards uh, one common goal as one team pulling together all our abilities is the biggest success formula that is the reason why the pandavas have won because they had a commonality of purpose the last formula the fifth formula is for every individual it is known as sundara kanda formula i don't know how many of you have read sundara kanda but sundara kanda is a story of rama sita ravana and hanuman sita was uh, enthralled or kept in thrall in the ashoka vatika hanuman goes to find out sita and come back and inform uh, rama that sita is present in the lanka then rama then goes along with his army and then controls it if you read sundara kanda you learn about sundara kanda from your teachers from your elders your parents some of you may not have read uh, sundara kanda there is a very interesting thing in sundara kanda in sundara kanda greatest god is mata sita and the strongest of the gods lord hanuman both fall into depression both want to commit suicide sita wants to commit suicide because she was unable to reach ravana and she was fed up with the torture of ravana sura so she wants to commit a suicide same way hanuman wants to commit suicide because you know he was tasked by lord rama 
to go and find out Sita. He was unable to find Sita. Wherever he searched, he was unable to find Sita. So he thought, if I go back and tell Rama that I have not found Sita, Rama would die there and then and there. When Rama dies, the Lakshmana would die soon. When Lakshmana dies, the whole of Kishkinda and the Vanarasena would die. When this news reaches Ayodhya, the people in Ayodhya would die. Instead of all these people die, dying, it is better that I die. So Hanuman wants to end his life so that Rama would live in perpetual hope that uh, Ravana would, sorry, Hanuman would come back sometime and give me the good news. So both Sita, the strongest female character of Ramayana, and Ram, Rav, sorry, Hanuman, the strongest male character of Ram, Ramayana, they wanted to commit suicide. That is the lowest point of their life. And at that instant, they start witnessing good omens. Sita suddenly hears that someone is singing Ram, Ram, Ram. So she looks up and she finds Ram, uh, Hanuman. And then she then stops the idea of committing suicide. Rama wants to commit, uh, you know, Hanuman wants to end his life, but he would uh, suddenly see that there is someone who is uh, crying Rama, 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 and he looks at, oh, this could be Sita. So he stops, abandons his idea of committing suicide. He jumps down. And that's how Hanuman and Sita meet. So the lowest point of your life could be the starting point to reach the highest point of your life. Both Sita and Hanuman waited for a few minutes before they committed suicide. And the good things came to them. And what happened, we all know. So most of us students, young people, we get depressed at the smallest and slightest of things. Your mother doesn't allow you to watch the mobile phone. So you get depressed, you want to end your life, commit suicide, jump into Hussein Sagar. You don't get the marks that you wanted. You fall short by about 10 or 15 marks. You don't come up as, you know, end up as the topper in the classroom. You get depressed and you want to commit suicide. These days, people want to commit suicide for the smallest of the reasons. So when we feel like depressed and when we feel like down and completely out, think of Sundarakanda, where you hear the story of Goddess Sita as well as Lord Hanuman, the strongest and the most powerful deities of Hindu philosophy wanted to end their lives, but they waited for some time and they reached the topmost point of their life. So Sundarakanda formula tells us to wait, bide your time, do not rush to hasty conclusions, do not end your lives just at the drop of a hat. Suicide is not the answer. This is a lesson that every student must learn. There is a tomorrow. There is an achievement to, you know, accomplish. There is a success to be gotten. So this lesson, the fifth formula, is for everyone, not just the leaders. So at the end, if you form, follow these five formulas, internalize them, you will become successful leaders. A successful leader will take India to its glory. So at the end, I would like to give one small advice and conclude my speech. I wish that all the leaders and the students should lead their life like the ninth multiplication table of mathematics. I am a student of Telugu medium. Your life must be like the ninth multiplication table, never like the eighth multiplication table. Let us look at the eight multiplication table. The eight multiplication table, eight ones are eight. Enemy look at the enemy. Eight is the final answer. Eight twos are sixteen. One plus six is seven. Eight threes are in mula twenty-four. Two plus four, it is six. So what is happening? Have you noticed? It was eight, then seven, then six, then eight four are thirty-two. Three plus two, five. Then you have come down one step further. Then you have come down one step further. And from 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0, 1, and then finally 0. Your life must never be like the 8 multiplication table. 
eight multiplication table, you start with a lot of enthusiasm, then you are distracted by the cricket match, you are distracted by other things, you are distracted by the movies, your friends will come and they will say, let's go out and party, then one more day, okay, tomorrow I will study, today let me sleep, and that way, from eight you will come down to, finally, through seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then zero. Your life must never be like the eighth multiplication table. It must be like the ninth multiplication table. Nine ones are nine. Nine twos are eighteen. One plus eight, nine. Nine threes are twenty-seven. Two plus seven, nine again. Nine, nine fours are thirty-six. Three plus six, nine again. Nine fives are forty-five. Five plus four, nine again. It is nine, 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 nine. It is eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and finally zero. This is so beautifully said in a Sanskrit shloka. It says, Adityam astiram chittam ashtavir gunitam yatha. If you are an astira chitta, someone with a fickle mind, someone without a, a strong resolve, your life is going to be like the eighth multiplication thing. And nityam karusatam chittam. For anyone who is a stirachitta, his life would be like the ninth multiplication table, which is of equal enthusiasm from beginning till the end and beyond. I only pray to the God that your life will all, all your lives will be like the ninth multiplication table and not like the eighth multiplication table. Dhaniwa. Thank you so much for your valuable words regarding the life lessons, which is simplicity, coordination, unity, and individuality. Just thank you so much for.